Hi, my name is Anushri Amethia and I'm a product manager at AWS. We're taking a deep dive to learn how AWS customers are using Amazon Recognition custom labels for their unique use cases. Let's get started. Hey everyone, we're really glad to have Mike with us today. Uh, Mike, why don't you do a quick intro of yourself and what you do and who you are? Sure, yeah, so I'm an AWS machine learning hero. Um, I'm one of those lucky people that gets to play around with AWS services and build awesome projects specifically with machine learning. Very cool. Um, and so, I heard that you had a very interesting project. We have in this house lots and lots and lots of Lego. We have many boxes filled with Lego pieces. Um, so I have this dream of building the ultimate Lego brick sorting machine, something that I can just pour all the bricks in and it will sort it out for me into all of these different containers. I know you work with a lot of customers in your role as an AWS hero and you, and you work with a lot of enterprises. Are there ways you think this correlates or relates to some other use cases you would see, or is this just something fun that you're building? No, well, absolutely. Um, so uh, yes, this is just something for me, and this is something for my family to use. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm basically in the process of trying to sort um, these plastic objects, these hard-bodied objects. Um, I think really the, the parallels to industrial use cases are definitely there. I can see that one day the machine that I build will probably have a conveyor belt with essentially these bricks traversing down the conveyor belt. We're analyzing those bricks and we're sorting them. Um, mm -hmm. It will probably mean that my front room of my house ends up looking a lot like an industrial process control unit um, because that's exactly the kinds of things that I think those organizations do as well. Got it. Very cool. So. How does computer vision fit into this magnificent Lego sorting machine that you're dreaming of building? Absolutely. So, well, in order to be able to actually detect the type of brick that we have coming down the conveyor belt, in order to be able to analyze that, um, essentially the easiest way from the sort of mechanics of it is just to put a camera on the conveyor belt and watch what comes down the conveyor belt. And so hoovering up all of that imagery that we can then subsequently process. So the, the easy side of it, I suppose, is to put the camera on the conveyor belt and to look at those bricks. It does then just mean that you sort of push the problem space slightly further down the road. You've got to now process that imagery and recognize the, the shapes and the objects which is inside that imagery. So I guess that's where computer vision comes in, is that um, it's, it's useful to essentially to replace me sitting there at the conveyor belt watching and picking pieces off. Um, and instead, we want computers to be able to watch what's happening on the conveyor belt and pick pieces off. So it's absolutely a computer vision style problem. Uh, doing this in any other way doesn't really make sense, I don't think, um, because you'd have to somehow sort of measure the size of the pieces, something like that. But to be completely flexible in the way that we can detect the types of bricks that are in front of us, um, it's all about computer vision. That, that definitely makes sense. I can, I can imagine you know trying to decide the difference between light gray and dark gray can get very ambiguous on those corner cases and having some sort of algorithm that you can train to know the difference between the two so you have a little bit more rigor around your categories could be quite helpful. But on that, it only works if you have a computer vision model that's curated to Legos. Sure. So, well, there's two parts to it, right? There's two, there's two, or well, at least two parts to it. Um, I'm going to categorize it as collecting the data and then creating the model. And so they are both um, fairly hard problems, I think, in this space. And so in terms of collecting data, I'll just talk about that briefly. And um, I did start out originally by taking lots and lots of photographs of Lego bricks. And whilst that was kind of fun and enjoyable, it just doesn't scale. So mm -hmm. I uh, eventually ended up with this technique of rendering 3D objects in a virtual space um, and actually using um, EC2 spot instances, um, which I sort of set up a sort of render farm of sorts um, to be able to render as many 3D images of Lego bricks as I could from all different angles with all different kinds of lighting and all different colors. So that was how I managed to get a, a really large data set of Lego bricks relatively mm -hmm. quickly. Um, now, 
with that large data set, then the problem was how do I create the model? And that's where uh, recognition custom labels comes in. Um, so recognition custom labels is essentially an image classification and object detection algorithm set. Um, mm -hmm. And so the fact that it's already built, it's already optimized, and it's got a lot of smarts behind the scenes that I don't have to tweak and get to know. I can basically pretty much just take my massive data set of Lego bricks, put it into custom labels, and push the button and get it to train. Um, it took a few hours to do so, but it was a few hours that I didn't have to spend doing that, and I didn't have to um, tweak hyperparameters or do any of that kind of stuff, and it just created the model for me. And um, it was the first project that I did with custom labels, and I was pleasantly surprised with the results. Awesome. Um, it's, out, it's a little bit like, a, I think sometimes we talk about it as BYOD, bring your own data. Did you use the console or did you import your data programmatically? So uh, the process that I had that rendered the Lego bricks, it actually um, output the data directly into an S3 bucket. And it actually put it into the S3 bucket with the prefix of the class of the brick. So that basically means that it's labeled all of the data for me through that process. Um, then I used the custom labels console page basically to tie up the bucket and say, this is the data set that I want to use for custom labels. Um, it was then able to sort of bring all of that data in. I could visualize it through the console. It could show me essentially that it understood the labeling that I'd applied to that data. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, in the console page, you could see all of that data there. It's also an opportunity to tweak things. Now I did um, image classification. I didn't do object detection. Um, with object detection, it would give me the opportunity as well to draw bounding boxes or to confirm bounding boxes that I'd had drawn through some other process. So that was done in the console. And then really to train the model, it, 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 it's almost boring to say this, but it really is just clicking the button and say, go, go make this model. Um, and that was done in the console too. Um, so once that's done, and it took, as I said, it took a few hours to do that. Um, again, in the console, you can go back, you can see the, uh, the metrics and the performance scores for the model, so you can see if you're happy with, with what it's produced. And really, right out of the box, it was performing very well and uh, far better than a simple model that I was going to put together myself um, using like a convolutional neural network or something like that. And so that was all done in the console. The model's then available inside of custom labels. And to deploy it out to an endpoint, I just use the command line. Um, and actually, there's a part of the console which shows you the actual command line that you use to uh, do that and to spin up the endpoint with the custom labels model running there. So um, a lot of it was centered around the console uh, and around sort of just point and click and just uh, magic happens behind the scenes. One of the very interesting things is you called out right away the importance of a large data set. Um, and I think that's something that's super interesting when it comes to training your own computer vision models, even if it's as easy as point and click and you don't have to hop into a Jupyter notebook and, and tune parameters as you're saying, you still need a model is only as good as the data you provide. That being said, could you use a small data set to get started? And how did you think about how big your data set needed to be? The thing with the Lego bricks is that there are lots of different Lego bricks for a start. And so I tried with a data set of 250 different Lego brick classes, essentially different classes that I wanted to throw into um, custom labels. So the fact that there are 250 uh, different classes means that obviously we are 250 times the amount of data for each individual brick already. So this is starting to this is starting to get big. Um, the other thing with the Lego brick is that they are a 3D object, um, and it's possible for when I eventually build the machine, it's possible that the bricks will be coming down the um, the, the, the conveyor belt in different orientations. So they could be on their back or on their top, or they could be on their side, they could be at different angles with the light coming off them and bouncing off them at different ways. Even on a conveyor belt where you've got a fairly controlled environment, um, you can still got lots of different ways to, to position the brick. And so because of that, I decided to um, uh, to have a lot of different renders of a lot of bricks, a lot of, uh, the same bricks, but in different angles to be able to hoover up as much of that information as I could. And I suppose that is why the data set that I ended up using was, is, is, was quite large. Um, 
Now, the other side to that, if you're using custom labels for something like logo detection, for example, um, custom labels can actually do a lot of this for you. So you can end up saying, OK, well, this is the logo that I have, and I want to detect that in a set of images. And because the logo is a fairly static thing, it, it, it's most logos look the same, um, you know, and, and we're talking about having it sort of printed in an image. So you can, you, in that circumstance, you can get away with having a much smaller data set and saying, OK, well, this is what the logo looks like, just a few different variations of it. And behind the scenes, custom labels will then um, augment that data for you, essentially making the data set larger for you behind the scenes if it feels that it needs to do so. And so in that circumstance, you can actually get away with a much smaller data set. And the experiments that I've done have shown that you can essentially just upload uh, four or five different logos, and it will be very good at detecting those logos in a whole range of images and a whole range of different spaces. So Mike, we've just talked about this Lego project and that computer vision is involved. Tell me a little bit more about recognition and how you discovered custom labels. Sure. So, well, recognition, as of course you know, uh, came out quite a few years ago. And I remember looking at it at the time and going into the console, because it's got a great console page with great demos on there showing you what you can do with it. And so you can put um, photographs up there and it'll do like, you know, here is a person. Anyway, it was, it was great to sort of demo to people what computer vision uh, machine learning could do. And I guess if it fit with your particular use case, then it worked well. But I never really looked at it beyond that. Um, then, when I was trying to put together this uh, Lego brick algorithm, and you know, I tried other things. So I tried SageMaker and SageMaker building algorithms and things like that. Um, and I'd been bashing away at this problem for a while. And then someone said, hey, what about custom labels? And I was like, actually, yes, I haven't come back and had a look at that. So I went into the console, had a look at recognition again, realized that custom labels is now a thing, and realized that, yeah, it actually makes the job of putting this model together much easier, which means that I can get on with doing other things. Yeah, I think one of the great parts is because the console is so easy to use and it you can annotate directly in the console itself, it's really easy to do a lunchtime POC. I definitely did a few of my own where uh, before an hour before a meeting, I'd load up a few pictures, annotate them, and have a model trained by the time that, that meeting rolled around. So Absolutely. The fact that the console is so easy to use might lead some people to believe that maybe it's not that powerful, but it, it really is. Like it's it's really simple point and click stuff, but under the hood, there's a lot of power behind it. Definitely. So what's next? You know, you've, you've walked us through this incredible Lego sorter. I'm envisioning beautiful buckets of color coordinated Legos of all different sizes. What's next? Yeah, so I think from here, I clearly, yes, I want to get to the point where I'm just sitting back and building Lego. Next is actually building this into the actual Lego brick sorting machine itself. So I guess now I need to move on to robotics um, and process control. I need conveyor belts and cameras, and we'll hook this up to custom labels endpoint and start to actually sort the massive amounts of Lego that I have in this house. Well, we're excited to see what's next and, and what you're able to build. Thanks, Mike, for walking us through building a Lego sorting machine. It was fascinating. Well, thank you very much, Anushree. Thank you. Okay, and we'll see everyone in the next one.